I look at this stuff and I just think, is this, is this another satirical website that I've been linked to? Because it can't possibly be true. 77 NHS trusts are signed up to a trans-supporting rainbow badge scheme. It's a sort of Stonewall-esque, mermaids-type scheme. And basically, it's asked hospitals to basically use, you know, be, be trans-inclusive, this term we hear all the time, um, and, and do it by doing things like not using what they call gendered words, so words like mother, uh, women, so women's health, or mothers and breastfeeding and things like that. Now, these people have signed up, these trusts have signed up to this policy, which is basically, I mean, basically wiping the existence of half of the people in this country off, off, the, off, off, the, off the world. I mean, what on earth is going on? started with la allowing the lobby groups in, listening to people like Stonewall, looking at their diversity champion scheme and so on. But now I'm sorry to say this is NHS England pushing this. This is from the centre. There's a team within a NHS England that pushes what they call EDI, equality, diversity and inclusion. But it's not inclusion of women, is it? If you can't <laughs> name women. And they are the ones who are pushing this onto hospitals. And there's a sort of pincer movement. There's the lobby groups outside. And then there's this directive coming from really inside NHS England from yeah. its LGBT group. I think you'll find it's LGBTQIA plus group if you check. More I think they possibly haven't renamed it. And now, you know, uh, they are bypassing all the clinical directors because no clinician wants to do this because anyone no. who's working with patients knows you need to use clear language so they understand you. One of the things they're saying is that you have to say colposcopy instead of smear tests. What, what? I didn't know I didn't know they were colposcopies. I've no. apparently had several of those things. So if I got a letter saying I needed one, I'd be like, no, I don't. That sounds like something I don't need. Exactly. So And also it's, having it's things all... like women's health, saying this is about women. Women, you need to go for a cervical smear. In the same way that you say, men, you need to go and have your prostate checked. But the funny thing is, it never they never are wiping out words like father or, or, or men. Whenever you see any campaign by any NHS organisation or charity about men's cancer or men's health, I guess because some just do only affect men, it's always, they use the word men. But it's only, it's only when it, inve it involves women. What does that tell you, Helen? It tells you it's a men's rights movement. They're a bunch of incels, these people. I mean, honestly, they go on about Andrew Tate, but this is worse. At least Andrew mm -hmm. Tate's up front about what he thinks. This is worse. We're meant to think that this is inclusive, that it's kind, that it's generous, but this is the NHS acting like a bunch of incels. Was, I mean, was there a massive issue for trans people, people who suffer from gender dysphoria and believe that they have been born in the wrong body, although that's not actually a real thing, people aren't born in the wrong body, your body is by definition your right body, but people who suffer from gender dysphoria, for whom we should give a lot of help and kindness and respect, um, that, that, uh, that those people were suffering at the hands of these awful people in the NHS who were horribly transphobic previously and not inclusive? They never, they never did any research to establish that and it's clear that if you've got gender dysphoria it's actually really important that your health care your health carers keep track of what sex you are because it doesn't change whether you need things like smear tests it doesn't change things like what level your blood sugar should be or your hormones should be or whatever you're still a woman you're still a man so it's actually really important that a trans man that's a woman who identifies as a man that the healthcare providers remember she's a woman and help her to remember that she's a woman yeah. so she doesn't skip her smear test for example well exactly and then we're told like men can also need them and you think well no they can't they're, they're, because they're women by definition if you've got the word trans that's the clue. There's also been some extraordinary uh, hospital posters up in NHS hospitals saying that even asking someone's name is transphobic. I mean, you need to ask, if you're a medical practitioner, you should ask someone's name and check they're the right person who's come in to see you. The rule is everything is transphobic. You can't go wrong if you remember that. I wish, I wish that was a joke, but it's not, and that's the thing. No, and reality again, is transphobic. No, it's well, just, yeah. this is the Stating truth. Stating facts is transphobic, but this is the thing. You're not transphobic, I'm not transphobic. I don't believe my audience is transphobic. We, you know, we are simply in a situation where people want to state facts and make sure people get the right health care, and everyone knows who they are, and we want to have, for instance, children not lied to and told that they could be born in the wrong body when they're not, and that they're not, boys can't become girls, and girls can't be born boys, and all of that, and that men, men can't have babies, and they can't breastfeed because they're men. Um, where does this end? Has the tide turned? Are we, are we at least at a point where we are exposing this? It's in mainstream newspapers. It's not just on talk TV as it was for a long time. Are we getting to a point where enough people now know about this and are going, enough already? Because the tide is certainly turning on things like women's sport. Are we, are we at a breaking, a tipping point? 
It's so bad and these policies are so lunatic that they can't survive contact with reality. Yeah. So while this was all just, you know, in university departments, maybe they could talk this sort of nonsense. But I don't really think you're going to do very well asking some middle aged man if he's ever been pregnant uh, again and again and again, right through his health care. He's going to get cross with you. So I do think that actually it's so bad that that might actually help. Yeah, but, but then he'll just people. He'll just get called a bigot and told he can't use that health service again. No, but people must tell. They must tell the politicians. They're starting to come and yeah. knock on doors. Somebody knocked on my door the other day and you have to say to them, stop this madness. I'm not voting for anyone who can't call a woman a woman or thinks that women can have penises. Absolutely. I'm not doing it. Absolutely. Then it gets back to them. Respect my ex if you want my ex. Indeed, my ex chromosome. Uh, always good to talk to you. Helen Joyce there, Director of Advocacy at Sex Matters and also that brilliant book, Trans. I, any parent, you've got any issues with this, read that book.